Hello everyone and welcome to Marketing Mixed Modeling Masterclass. So we live in an era where we have seen a surge in demand when it comes to all shapes and forms of marketing mixed modeling, including in-housing MMM. So in today's session, we will try to understand why brands would consider in-housing marketing mixed modeling, what to consider when it comes to in-housing MMM, and what is exactly the truth behind using freemium software. Why would the brand consider or think about in-housing marketing mixed modeling. There is a number of reasons for this, amongst which we can cite gaining independence and scalability, mitigating against the risks of sharing data with external partners, especially in this era where data privacy uh, rules are getting stricter and stricter, respond more swiftly to pressing business questions. We know that the in-house teams will always be closer to the business. They will listen to what uh, the business needs and try using marketing mix modeling to respond to all these questions. Uh, increase the frequency of the updates and the, granular, and the granularity of the results because we uh, again uh, we have seen that there has been an acceleration in the media planning cycles and the in-house teams would perhaps need to increase the frequency at which uh, they deliver marketing mix modeling project so we can inform uh, the media planning cycles and come up with a more actionable and more dynamic marketing and media plans. Enhancing marketing mix modeling is a strategic move. There has been a lot of reports that promote enhancing marketing mix modeling. However, it is very, very important for brands to ensure a smooth transition from agency-led marketing mix modeling to enhancing MMM. What should you consider before enhancing? Three things to consider. The first one is the in-house marketing analytics team. The second one is the right technology partner. And the third one is about building sustainable and efficient capability in-house. Preparing your marketing mix modeling in-house team is very important. And I think that this is one of the most important pillars in succeeding your transition to in-house marketing mix modeling. And here you need to think about two components when it comes to the profile that you want to pick for in-house your marketing mix modeling. There is the business acumen, understanding the business, understanding the priorities, and also understanding the marketing mix modeling output and what is required from achieving a marketing mix modeling project. The other component would be the analytical skills that those resources need to have in order to be able to embrace marketing mix modeling. There are very important elements to consider when it comes to picking your right technology partner. So the first one is actually the technology they use. Okay, how mature is that technology? How easy it is to use when it comes to passing it on your internal teams? And whether the technology can actually respond to the contemporary needs of marketing mix modeling. The second one is the readiness of the partner to transfer knowledge to you, to be transparent when it comes to their processes, when it comes to their methods, and are they really willing to pass all this on to you? The third element, which is very, very important, is the expertise of the technology partner when it comes to marketing mix modeling. Enhancing MMM is not easy. And in the future, you will need the expertise of your partner to help your teams going through all the phases of the marketing mix modeling project. So assessing the richness of the experience of the technology partner when it comes to using marketing mix modeling, deploying marketing mix modeling, is something that I would consider when I pick my right technology partner. Efficient and long-term capability building. What do you mean exactly by this? Whether you want to move all your MMM in-house or part of it in-house, there are phases in this transition that need to happen. And these three phases are called build, operate, transfer. What? Here we have two curves. The first one depicts the investment from the client. The second one is the client capability. And as you can clearly see from this graph, as you are moving from step one to step two to step three, the investment is decreasing and the client capability is increasing. And that's exactly the objective of this transition. 
In the build phase, most of the heavy lifting is on the external partner or the technology partner that will help you create your first models. With close intervention and with close uh, mentorship of your internal teams. The second part is the operate. That's where some of these models will be passed on to your teams so they can rescore them, so they can rebuild them, so they can refresh them. And that's where the, 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 the agency partner will take a back seat and will observe how your teams are building these models and helping them with the consultancy in order to make sure that they deliver good quality model. The third part is actually the transfer, where basically what happens here is that uh, there, is, there are few consultancy hours happening here. Most of the time, the models are being done by your internal teams, and that's where your client capability peaks and the investment decreases, and your dependence on the technology partner will decrease. The last part I'd like to cover is the difference between open source software and paid for marketing mixed modeling specialist software. To compare between open source software and specialist paid for marketing mixed modeling software, I would like to talk about three elements here. The first one is the cost, the second one is the support, and the third one is the scalability. Concerning the cost, I would like to emphasize that tools like R, Python, or even internally built software are not really free. Often, companies underestimate the time it takes to adapt these tools to their specific needs. On the other hand, when you look at specialist marketing mixed modeling software, everything is being built in order to address the specific need of the marketing mixed modeling field. The second element I would like to talk about here is the support. When we look at open source software, most of the time, there is limited or sometimes no customer support. In addition to that, any help that you might have from open source solutions, in most of the cases, they're not given by experts in marketing mixed modeling. However, when you look at their marketing mixed modeling specialist counterpart, you would see that most of the time, you have dedicated support by teams that are fully knowledgeable about marketing mixed modeling. Also, the technology that is being used is fueled by the feedback of many clients and many users, which will make the tool evolve over time. The third element here is the scalability. And talking about scalability, I would like to emphasize one particular point here, which is the time it takes to onboard and to train new hires or even existing members of the team when it comes to those code-based tools. This is something that you need to consider because in most of the cases, it's very much time consuming and it takes a lot of time for resources to be able to get up to speed when it comes to these open source tools. However, for marketing mixed modeling paid solutions, these problems have already been addressed and the solution that you have at hand in most of the cases is scalable and very easy to explain and to pass on to your in-house marketing mixed modeling team. Thank you for watching our videos. I hope this video was particularly useful to you. If you like our content, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.